Good Tuesday morning, my friends out there in devotion land. <laughs> Joy here. Are you ready for Tuesday, October 12, 2021? I haven't even looked at it yet, but I'm going to right now when I put my Margaret bookmarker. What are these called? Bookmarks? Let me tell you what it says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. My good friend Margaret sent me that. I love it very much. Okay, October 12th. Forgiveness for all. And it's from Matthew 18, 22. I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. That was quite a shocker, wasn't it, when Jesus said that? It really was. It really was. And it gives us no way out. <laughs> no escape, no way out. <laughs> you have to forgive. I don't know that somebody can offend you or hurt you more than 77 times in one day. But... <laughs> Because after the first or second time, I run away, and there's no, there's no more time to hurt me again after that. Okay, let's see what she says about it. Forgiveness is not always easy, especially when the offender doesn't believe she needs forgiveness. Why is it always a she? I guess because this book is written for women, but that goes for anything says she in here, it's a, it's a he too. <laughs> It's a he and a she and a everybody. But the thing about anger and grudges is that they hurt only the one who was holding on to them, which would be you. Not the person they're angry towards. So forgive and forgive and forgive because it's better for you. When you think about it, it's also what Jesus does for you. Don't keep score with how much you are forgiving. Just do it. Forgiveness and restoring the relationship is the point. Now, restoring the relationship, I have to argue with her on that. You can forgive, but there's a lot of times you don't want any more relationship with a person, with some people, with certain people, um, especially people who just, that's all they can do is hurt you. You know, they're so jealous of you, or they, they hate you for this, or they hate you for that, or, or they're just the type of person that's constantly criticizing and never has anything nice to say. And You know, you, you have to separate yourself. Jesus tells you to dwell on things that are good and pure and lovely. I have a magnet on my refrigerator downstairs that Viv sent me with that scripture on it, and boy, I just love it. It's like... I'm not going to go around people who are hateful and ugly and not ugly in, in what they look like, but ugly in their behavior. Because how can you dwell on things that are good and pure and lovely if you are dwelling with people like that? So, I don't know. It's a constant conflict for me. You know, does forgiving mean I have to have a relationship with that person. You know, Jesus hung around with sinners all the time. He got along with sinners better than he did with the religious people. And so I'm like, should I just like hang around in bars and, you know, <laughs> brothels? And What's a brothel? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> but no, no. I protect myself. I guard myself. I shield myself from places like that. And, uh, people that hang around in places like that. You know, I find it very, very hard to um, communicate with alcoholics. Alcoholics are so down on everything and so gloomy and so nothing's ever their fault. I know, I've known many of them and nothing is ever their fault. It's everybody else's fault and you know, they never had, they've been fired from every job they've ever had but it was never their fault. Not the fact that they never showed up because they were drunk. We had one working for Jerry one time it was actually his brother that died of alcoholism. And um, he'd call and he'd say, he didn't show up for work, Joy, will you go over there to where he lives and see if you can wake him up and see if you can make him come to work. And you know, he had um, the issue of number one, it was his brother, so of course he loved him, he was trying to help him. Number two, 
His mother was a major, major enabler and absolutely insisted that Jerry hire him. And she said, you hire him and I'll pay his salary. You have to hire him. You have to give him a job. And so you get involved with these people. And we knew he was an alcoholic. We knew he'd been fired from a million jobs. We knew his lifestyle. So I just, I would have told his mother, you know, you hire him to come plant bushes in your yard or vacuum your living room and you pay him. I'm not going to hire him. But Jerry, of course, you know, loved his mother, loved his brother. And this happened not only with one brother, but with two. And same, same, same thing happened. The other one stole drugs from him. So, and of course, of course, of course, <laughs> it was never their fault that Jerry let him go. It was never their fault. It was always Jerry's fault. Same, he hired another relative on my side of the family one time. And same thing, same thing. Let her go because of absolutely absurd behavior. And she's told for years and years and years, Oh, he did this and he did that, and I was marvelous and I was amazing and blah, 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 and he just did this and, oh, I just, I just have a real issue getting along with the alcoholic mentality. <laughs> so that's just me. You may have the gift. God has given some people the gift where they can, like Mother Teresa, it wouldn't have mattered what they'd done if they'd just murdered half the nation. She just loved everybody. Drug them out of the dump, drug them out of the, the uh, garbage pit. And she just took care of everybody and everything. She just loved them. She didn't smell the smells. She, didn't, she wasn't offended. She wasn't hurt. She was just, I don't know a whole lot about her, but I know that she did a lot of work like that. And I just thought, I don't know if I could ever do that, Lord. I just don't know if I could ever do that. Okay, who cares about that? Let's see what else she said. <laughs> We've got a prayer at the bottom. Let's see what this prayer is about. Dear Father, forgiveness is not easy for me. Now that is not true, so I'm not going to pray it. Forgiveness is easy for me. But maybe you want to pray this prayer. Forgiveness is not easy for me. It's more natural for me to hold grudges. But I know that is not right. Help me to be willing to forgive, just as I hope others will forgive me. Fill me with your forgiveness and love toward those who hurt me. In Jesus' name. Now, you may need to pray that prayer. But I learned long, long, long ago that unforgiveness hurts me way more than it hurts the person who hurt me. So I do forgive them. There's nobody right now. I'll tell you the hardest is these people that hurt the children. And you know I've told you that before. And I can forgive them. And I can pray that somehow they come to know Jesus as their Savior and this horrid, horrid murder of children stops somehow. But boy, it's hard for me to forgive those people. But you have to. You have to. In fact, that's, that's my, my number one problem with depression is um, I guess I do have a hard time forgiving, don't I, when it comes to that. These people murdering children, not only in the womb, but because of their religion, worshiping Satan. Satan requires, and you know it from the Bible. You know it from the Bible. It's in here all the time. They're always murdering the children. And Satan requires child sacrifice. And in the Satan religion, they're murdering them right now, today, this very time. My daughter um, follows this lady. I don't <laughs> because... Um, She's been very, very involved in witchcraft and things like that. But because she's been very involved in the Satan religion, I think her grandmother was involved in it or something, she said that she has witnessed thousands of children being murdered. She or somebody she knew or something like that. But it happens. That is the cry of my heart is for the children. I don't know how anybody, anybody could hurt a precious, precious child. And how can I change it? How can I help? What can I do? I don't know. And that is my frustration. That is my concern. That is my heart. That is my, my stress, my depression, is what can I do? And of course we know, Jerry taught us Sunday, our power is in prayer. Our power is in prayer. And we must always pray. And we must know that God is bigger. But God can't do anything about that until we do our job down here and we pray and we believe and we bind you know the bible says what we bind on earth is bound in heaven so we must bind satan and all of his demons tell him satan i bind you and all of your demons i bind you i rebuke you and i bind you here on earth and god binds you in heaven and you have no right to harm a child 
I plead the blood of Jesus over all the children, and I bind all the devils in the name of Jesus. Now, I don't know that that's the exact right way to go about doing that. But until somebody teaches me different, that's how I do it. And you know there's power in agreement. Jerry talked about it Sunday. So if two of us bind them, and three of us bind them, and four of us bind them, what does the Bible say? One can put a thousand to flight, but two can put ten thousand to flight? Two? Wow. So, do it with me. Bind the devil. Bind all of his demons. And plead the blood of Jesus over all the babies and all the children. Halloween's coming up. That's Satan's high holiday. I hate Halloween. I just hate it. I cannot believe there are so-called Christians out there celebrating Halloween. People I know very well. I'm just shocked. They got all the Harry Potter books. Oh, I've read all the Harry Potter books. Aren't they wonderful? No, it's witchcraft. It's demonic. They aren't wonderful. They allow those in the school for our children to read, but they don't allow the Holy Bible in there. No, it's wrong. That's how many people out there are making quilts with witches and warlocks and bats and, and haunted houses and, and so many demonic things. Look, isn't this cute? Isn't this cute? No, it's not cute. It's satanic. Burn it. Throw it away. Don't allow it in your house. Don't give Satan any room at all. Do not allow him in your home in your car, anywhere in your yard, plead the blood of Jesus over all your property, all your belongings, and ask God to protect you, surround you with angels, um, anoint your house with oil. There's lots of things you can do. Make sure you don't give the devil any place. And for heaven's sakes, quit celebrating his holiday. Celebrate fall! Celebrate fall. Absolutely but not witchcraft and not anything that is from Satan's kingdom. Dear, dear friends, wake up if you can. <laughs> That's my little sermon for the day, and I'm sure a lot of people turned off a long time ago, but that's okay. <laughs> that's the way I feel about it. All right, dear ones, I'm going to let you go. I have got a video to make today on how to make this quilt. So, check out my other channel later on today, and maybe I'll have that done. I've been working really, really hard getting it ready. So, I'll let you go for now, but I'll be back tomorrow for a wonderful Wednesday.